you're wanting to have a little pep in your step and look smart from top to toe, but are not sure where to start with shoe shopping and don't want to get off on the wrong foot, then you're in the right place. We're happy gentlemen, and this video will give you a quick rundown of three different types of shoes. Oxfords, Derbys, and Brogues. What they are, how they're different, and when to wear them. Oxfords. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And these shoes have really put in the miles. Though called the Oxford after its university popularity in the 1800s, this classic style originated in Scotland and Ireland in the 17th century. For reference, this is the century when the Ming Dynasty fell, Scotland and England united under a common monarch for the first time, the Mayflower first arrived in America, and Isaac Newton published the laws of motion and gravity. Unlike a few things that reached the height of popularity in university, this style has not peaked. If 400 odd years of popularity doesn't prove this as a timeless classic, then I'm not sure what will. Oxfords, not brogues. Brogues aren't always Oxfords, and Oxfords aren't always brogued. But an Oxford can have broguing and still be an Oxford, not a brogue. The key defining trait of what makes an Oxford an Oxford is that the shoe has a closed lacing system, which means that the eyelets for the laces are sewn underneath the vamp. This is what gives the shoe its characteristic sleek and sophisticated appearance, making it a popular choice for formal occasions such as weddings, business meetings and black tie events. However, this versatile shoe isn't just for formal occasions. You can really step up your casual game by opting for a brogued Oxford and pairing them with a pair of jeans and a bomber style leather or denim jacket. Derbies. The Derby shoe is another classic men's dress shoe, originating in the United Kingdom, though the Derby originated in England in the 19th century. The shoe is believed to be named after the 14th Earl of Derby, Edward Smith Stanley, a prominent politician, known patron of the arts at the time, and a keen supporter of horse racing. According to the popular story, he was fed up with the rigidity and discomfort that came with wearing traditional riding boots, and sought a more practical and comfortable style of shoe for himself and his friends to wear while watching horse races. Thus. The Derby shoe was created with its characteristic open lacing system, and over time, the Derby shoe became popular beyond the green pastures of the racecourses. As mentioned before, one of the Derby's key traits is its open lacing system. If you remember back to the Oxfords, which are known for their closed lacing system, you'll be able to see here how the open lacing system differs. Not only does this open lacing system have the practical benefit of being more flexible with the minor foot swelling that comes with warmer weather, but it also gives it a slightly more casual feel than the Oxford. And while it is an ideal choice for business casual and smart casual occasions, it is still a versatile and stylish shoe that can be worn for both formal and casual occasions. Brogues. The Brogue shoe is another shoe, with origins hailing from Scotland and Ireland in the early 20th century. We're going to quickly circle back to the earlier statement of Oxfords can be Brogues and Brogues can be Oxfords. This is because, unlike the Derby and the Oxford being defined by their vent and lacing system, the Brogue shoe is defined by its perforated pattern, known as broguing. This pattern is typically found on the toe, cap, heel cap and sometimes on the sides of the shoe. Though decorative now, the holes in the shoe were originally worn for drainage making, as this is the perfect shoe to be worn by farmers and for anyone else looking to wear them for outside purposes. Kind of like a ye olde version of Crocs. Because of its historical tendency to be worn by lower status individuals, and background as sportswear shoes with broguing are considered more smart casual and are typically worn to more casual events, such as outdoor weddings or business casual events. We would suggest a lighter colour brown pair or a suede navy for a casual summery look, and a block coloured black or oxblood coloured leather for more formal events. And we would advise you to avoid these at black tie events, unless there is a relevant theme or your personal style has a distinctive bold flair. Additional information of breaking the shoe in, cleaning and storage. If you want to put your best foot forward, you need to make sure to wear your shoes in and get appropriate insoles if needed. Keep your shoes clean, polished if needed and odour free. 
and make sure that if you're not wearing your shoes regularly, they are appropriately stored. This could mind buying a storage bag or box and some inserts to help avoid scuffing and distortion while storing. When it comes to the look of the shoe, feel free to play around with different colors, heel height, materials, sole, tread type, or toe shape as you learn your style and get more comfortable and confident in your choices. If you're unsure where to start with a smart shoe, we recommend starting with a rounded or chisel toe black leather Oxford as your go-to formal shoes. And a brogues derby lace, tan, or charcoal boot can be a solid choice for a more durable and casual, but still stylish look. When it comes to styling the shoe for events, make sure that your shoes fit well and are comfortable. Break them in if required. Pay attention to the color and material of the shoe and make sure it matches the dress code of the event and the outfit that you've chosen. Now that you know the difference between the three styles, when to wear them and how to care for them, you're hopefully a step closer to being fully suited and booted. Too much? And to stop me putting my foot in it, I'll finish up there. Thank you for watching, and if you liked any of the shoes shown in the video, you can check the description box for more details and links. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more men's suit and style tips. But that is all for us today, so thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.